thousand of those were made throughout the war and the mathematicians amongst you will work out that that is a thousand tractors a week. A thousand tractors a week. So at the height of the war, rationing, shortages and everything else, somebody was still finding 4,000 wheels. 2,000 mudguards and it is just an extraordinary part of the history of this country. That little green tractor there, that's what the Women's Land Army, all those amazing girls and women that took part in the agricultural war effort, that is what they used. The tractors you see today, that little green standard Fordson, that is probably one of the most significant. 22 or 3 horsepower, starts on petrol, runs on TBO, and TBO is best known these days for being rather like central heating oil. So once it was hot, you could switch it over. Uh, even the most ardent that they could be a bit temperamental, an unreliable little lighter of a thing sometimes. But nonetheless, the contribution they made throughout the Second World War was frankly just extraordinary. They built these tractors on the side of the River Thames, and they were a bright orange colour. So imagine that you're making a thousand a week, and you park them in a field by the side of the factory. Luftwaffe coming up the River Thames, using the Thames as a navigational aid. Well, it became very apparent that uh, a thousand orange tractors parked in a field. Quite basic tractors, but in terms of the technical abilities, most tractors were three speed, the Nuffield was five speed, so quite an advanced little tractor in its time. Now we come on to the E27N. Now an E stands for English, 27 stands for 27 horsepower, an N was the 9N, 2N were all N, and N denoted tractors. This tractor in front of me now is very much a hybrid because at the end of the war, drills, and so it was deemed that we fit the standard Fordson engine, that the original engine in a more advanced tractor successful when they fitted a P6 45 horsepower diesel engine and that made that a hell of a tractor in its day so that very nicely presented E27N now we come on to a grey Fergie now post-war we've already talked about wartime but Post-war, the Grey Fergie is by far the most influential little tractor ever made. Made by Harry Ferguson, initially with some help from America, from Ford, but they sadly fell out. And if you people ask, well, what is the validation of a tractor? Well, if you've made 530,000 of them, Take it from me, you've made something that people wanted. Clever was its hydraulic linkage, which meant that you could attach implements to the tractor. You could then transfer the weight of the tractor onto the back of the back of the tractor, which meant that it. Now we're moving on in years, and we've come up into the 19 early 70s with the wonderful 1124 County. County from Fleet in Hampshire, an incredible company because they took the basic Ford tractor. Ford at that time were not interested in four-wheel drive. Uh, and so County said, well, if we put a bigger engine in and we made it four-wheel drive, we would have a world beater. And my goodness, they did because the county went all over the world. The ability to put that 120 horsepower down onto the ground meant they were such a successful tractor. If they had a failing, it was the fact that they went round. 
But given that that was a bit of a compromise, the rest of it was so important uh, that they became a very, very successful tractor brand. And they morphed into all sorts of industrial massive winches and all sorts of things. The county today has become an incredibly valuable and sought after tractor from a collector's point of view. So it's great to see that county here. Thank you for bringing that, sir. Now, Ferguson, we've already talked about the significance of Ferguson. Ferguson amalgamated with Massey Harris, and we ended up with the Massey Ferguson 35. Very much with its roots rather in. But this is a bit more powerful, a few more gears. Has this one got multi power, sir? No. Um, ultra, ultra reliable. These tractors still today, the Massey Ferguson 35, are America, Pakistan, all sorts of places like that. Uh, and a very, very desirable and very collectible tractor because that has become rare by default. In other words, they made many, many thousands of them, but the vast majority of them have all been exported. Now we come on to Case. Now, this just demonstrates how advanced America was in the day because this crawler probably is a least there. In other words, 